So when you say this, standby, you get a standby and then on air means we're actually going to the transmitter. This mic doesn't work, right? It's not on yet. Not on. Do you want it on? Sure. Well, let's wait till the show. Yeah. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to a very cold day here in the Lehigh mm -hmm. Valley, but that's okay. Rumor has it there might be some snow in the air, because I'm just guessing at the weather, because having fun is a little bit of what we're going to talk to you today. Our topic is dealing with anxiety and depression in a crazy world. This is a very serious topic. It is a very prevalent mental health issue right now that's going on, not just locally, but globally as well. And we started this show last Wednesday, and we started talking about anxiety and depression and what's going on out there and, and some of the things that are happening with our children, our family, our loved ones, and what we can do about it. And we got so much content and so many questions coming in, and we also have a very special guest that was on as well. We didn't quite finish everything last week, so today is part two of our dealing with anxiety and depression in a crazy world and again as many of you know we are putting these shows up on our youtube channel um dr susan's ph um so we'll just give you a little bit of background but again my name is dr susan i am the owner president and um practitioner for dr susan's ph integrative health i have my own practice in nazareth pennsylvania and we treat pretty much everything from surgery recovery to anxiety and depression so we started talking about um, anxiety and depression, and it's a very serious thing. I know I personally have been through uh, that, what we call whirlwind of survival uh, for a couple of reasons, but we wanna to talk to you today again about what is going on with anxiety and depression. We talked a little bit last week about researches, research, researchers who've been studying anxiety and depression and what we can do and what social isolation does to the human brain and how it degrades uh, cognitive function and all of the things along those lines. But we talked about also collateral damage right now with some of the quarantine rules and mandates that people are living through the loss of jobs. But we're, we wanted to talk to you about survival stories too and what you can do during this pandemic, during your life, during other things that may happen, during the traumas and, and things that happened about what you can do about anxiety and depression. So we introduced last week our special guest, Joya Mettler. How are mm -hmm. you? She is Very with us good. again in the studio. And she is 18. So I want to rephrase that. She is 18. Now, most of us who have been around the block, so to speak, I am in my mid-50s. I know my friends who have been through anxiety and depression, and many of my patients right now that we are treating for anxiety and depression are well into their 30s, mm -hmm. their 40s. I actually have a 70-year-old right now who's going wow. through anxiety and depression. So we're going to, I'm actually going to let Julia reintroduce herself. For those of you who missed last week's show, who have not yet watched it on our YouTube channel, but we're going to introduce Julia and we're going to talk to you about, we're going to, I'm actually going to ask you to re, re explain mm -hmm. your journey. And at 18, what got you here? Like what mm -hmm. put you in anxiety and depression? We're going to start there and then we're going to bring in the science and talk to you about some strategies. And yes, I promise I will get to all of the questions that came in via text, via messenger. We went over them this morning. We have to make sure we get to these. I thank everybody for submitting their questions. But if you wanna call in today and ask a question or share a success story or a strategy that works, our call in number is 610-866-8074. And again, we are on till 10 a.m. on WGPA, sunny 1100 a.m. So thank you for everybody listening in. And thank you for everybody who's been sharing our links on social media. So, Julia, welcome again. I'm so excited. So, could you please share again, your listeners, you are 18. Yeah. How did you get to the point where anxiety and depression completely controlled your life? So, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you tell your story. Go ahead. So, when I was 11 years old, I got bit by a tick, and I got Lyme disease. And not only did I just get Lyme disease, but I got three co-infections. So, I was being attacked, you know, from head to toe in my body. And um, my health was completely just depleting, completely. I had 
no life. I was often, most of my days, paralyzed from the waist down. I could not walk, I could not move. I lived every day for six years of my childhood. I was 11 That's when this started, 11 years old. You're in sixth grade, you know, you're beginning middle school. And I was in bed every day, isolation, um, and complete fear about what the next day held because it was so much pain, chronic pain, that I was facing. And, you know, that's what eventually got me into that downward spiral of depression because it's very easy to feel depressed when you're doing nothing all day long, when you can't go to school, you can't be a normal kid, you see all these kids trying out for sports in seventh grade and you can't. You're sitting in bed, you're in pain, you're crying. I would wake up in the middle of the night from pain and I would just cry and I would have this outburst of just like, I wanna die, I can't handle this, I can't contain this. And I had anxiety that was just all constant, constant anxiety, constant fear that it was never gonna end, that the pain was going to start. Cause sometimes I would feel better, you know, enough to move sometimes. And I'd be able a little to bit of hope. <laughs> go downstairs <laughs> right. to the first floor of the house, you know, and, and eat breakfast or, you know, lunch. But eventually I never ate breakfast, you know, outside of my bed. I was always, or I didn't eat breakfast at all because, like, you know, my parents weren't home and uh, they were working full time. And so, you know, I went through six years of this in my childhood, in my childhood. And That's... so, you know, um, it was very, very difficult. And I went a lot of places in a wheelchair for a long time. I had one of those walkers with a seat, you know, and I would always, you know, yes. make a joke out of it. I feel like I'm a 90 year old woman in a 15 year old's body. Yeah, that's or, horrible. You know, like, 14, I can't even 13. imagine the yeah. stress your parents must have went through seeing oh, yeah. you live through mm -hmm. that. And they didn't get the parenthood, you know? They it's, didn't get to actually be a parent for a healthy child. They were your child. caregiver. They were, they were your medical, caregiver. almost your medical yeah. provider mm -hmm. caregiver 24 7. Yes. Okay. And, and chronic, you mentioned chronic pain a couple of times. Chronic mm -hmm. pain is very debilitating. Yes. And I, I know too, I've been, so I've been through the chronic pain game too, where mm -hmm. and most of the doctors you go to, they think you're lying. They, yeah. they totally think you okay. are it was all mental. My fault. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, I, it was my fault. Yeah. I remember, I know, but chronic pain is another thing that mm -hmm. eventually we'll, we'll yeah. address because that's one of the things I treat in my practice mm -hmm. and we get people pain free. I, I, it, and it's amazing what happens when you get someone pain free mm -hmm. for the first time. Because the first time they almost don't believe that the therapy that we used actually worked. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, it only took eight minutes and you're good. Mm -hmm. Nope, you're good. And then she comes back the next. So I understand that. We'll talk about how we can get rid of chronic pain too. But so, okay, so you went through what I'm gonna call this dark, depressing journey that yeah. just threw you. How do you see, how did you find your light out of your tunnel? Because it's like being in a tunnel. Because That's I found room. God. Okay. Mm -hmm. so because found I found faith. And, you know, I, the whole time that I was sick, I had a hope that it would get better. You know, I had a hope. I always had that little hope. Maybe one day this will be better because I know that I want to be a mom. I know that I want to have a family. I know that I want to go to college. I know that I want to do all these things that I'm interested in doing, but I can't do them because I'm not physically capable of doing it. I can't walk, I can't move, I'm paralyzed. I literally can't do the things I want to do because I'm physically impaired, I'm disabled. So, you know, I was, I had all these hopes for these things that I wanted to do because I really did have things I wanted to do in life, you know, because I was a child and I was, you know, looking up to all these other people in my life, like family and friends that were a little older than me that were doing things with their life and had careers and, you know, had jobs and stuff. And I always wanted to have that because, you know, that's the next part of life after so childhood. So understand, so you had to look outside yourself. Right. Because that's a strategy we're going to talk about mm -hmm. on how to deal with anxiety and depression is you've got to look outside yourself. Yeah. Because so, if you only see you, mm -hmm. uh, you're like, uh, there's nothing else there. Because yeah. you only see the negative, the dark, the, mm -hmm. you know, the, all the, the I can'ts, the I can'ts, the I don't, what I don't have. Mm -hmm. But seeing outside yourself is very important. So you had hope. Yeah. And the hope was good, but it wasn't good enough. I had a hope that was easily lost, was easily lost in the daily struggle. But if I had faith in every part of me, I would have been able to make it through it and see that Jesus was going to heal me and he was going to set me free of everything. But if somebody, nobody told me, right. you know, if somebody just would have told me that Jesus can heal you and Jesus can set you free. He died on the cross for you. 
to remove your sickness and disease today. Right. And, you know, I'm telling you today, everybody that is listening, Jesus loves you. He is willing to heal you. He is not waiting. He is not holding back. He loves you and he died for you so you could be set free. So you could be washed clean by his blood. Um, and I want you to know that today because that is the very thing that brought me out of the darkness, brought me out of the depression, was the light and the hope that I found in him. And But as a kid, you found that. And as a kid, I found that because I went to church as a kid. My mom brought me to church. And, you know, I lost I lost it. I turned away from God when I was sick. And, and a lot of people I find do. a lot of people do that. But yeah. So let me throw something else at you then. So do you believe then, let's take everything, because right. now... Um, people out there are probably thinking, okay, okay, mm -hmm. look, no offense, sweetheart, but right. Jesus did not heal you. No offense, not mm -hmm. gonna happen. Okay, do you believe that? Because some people don't believe in Jesus and or God, but they do right. believe in a higher order. Yes, there's because there's you know, like I said, I've been working for different churches my entire life, mm -hmm. but you know, as an ordained minister, we had to learn every religion mm -hmm. on the planet. So my question is, is do you believe that whatever order people out there believe in, do you believe that they put people in your life for a reason yeah. to point you down the right path? God places people in your life. The question God is, are you open to seeing them? Are you open to seeing that mm -hmm. person? Yeah. Are you are you willing and able to see those people that God? Because you know, if you don't know God, you you just think, oh yeah, this person is just in my life. You don't see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. But with you, when you were put into my life, and when I knew you, was when I was just starting to go to church, and um, you were the one person in my life that really knew all of all of my what if this happens or I can't do that or I'll never be able to do that and you were the one person that looked at me and you you can and you will right and well, you. some some people need that person in their life and if you don't have that person in your life be that person be that voice I can and I will today and that's that's another strategy that we're mm -hmm. going to bring up. So let's talk about the medical side of things. Because I have a lot of people who listen who are on the medical side of things going, yeah. okay, you were physically given some mm -hmm. really rotten diagnoses as a kid. Yes, really bad. So what what did you do with all of the information that your doctors gave you, even though it was pretty bleak? Mm -hmm. What did all of that teach you? I mean, let, let's... For the people who listen who really, right now, there's a lot of people struggling to believe anything mm -hmm. on the religious side of things right now. So for the people who were looking at the medical side of things, like how did you come out of what the medical doctors told you would never happen? What, what kind of changed for you? So I was always... Because you had said last week that you were on a ton, a ton of, of pills. I was always on, always on medication. I was always on medication. There was not a time from when I was 11 to 17 that I wasn't on something, um, whether it was, you know, a steroid, an injection, or a prescription pill, I was on something, and okay. I was on multiple. So I was how did you get past it? How did you get past it? What'd you do? So <laughs> when I started going to you, I realized, I, you know, you come to a breaking point. And I had already broke. A That's what I was times. trying to get at from you. What a million was your, times what was before your, that. What was your breaking point? That because you said, I would okay. take, I would take everything. I would take these medications. I would take them daily. I would take over three hundred things a week. That's amazing. A week, like insane. I I was taking pills three times a day. I had a regimen. We would crush them up and put them in smoothies so I could drink more at a time. Insane. Absolutely insane. So that I could get as much as possible so that I didn't have to, you know, swallow all of them. So it was easier for me because I had so many to take. Right. So, you so know, you that reached a breaking point. So, so because somebody asked me, somebody asked me, at what point do you stop listening to yeah. the people in your life or the medical providers or the mm -hmm. holistic providers or whoever you're going to? And there's a lot of, a lot of doctors and things out there. You know, I had one, one girl, you know, similar to you. She was on 42 pills a day, 42. Like she actually counted them out. I'm like, yeah. how do you Literally. keep track? And I asked her, I said, at what point yeah. do you as a person go, look, yeah. I'm listening to this doctor and that doctor and this doctor, and I am not getting any better. Mm -hmm. Whatever they tell me to take, I'm taking religiously and mm -hmm. I'm getting worse and worse and worse every day. What point, now take me out of the picture, because I know mm -hmm. you came to me as a patient right. first and all of that, you know, we did your full review. At what point did you get to the point and go, okay, mom and dad, we need a change. I think that happened um, my freshman year. 
one a year and a half after I got actually diagnosed with Lyme disease you know my actual condition I, I got diagnosed with Lyme disease um, and that was when you know I found out what I really had because for two years I was undiagnosed misdiagnosed, well, I'm gonna say misdiagnosed and um, you know not 10 undiagnosed. out of 11 women I'll give yeah. you a statistic now which is really adds to anxiety and depression is 10 out of 11 women mm -hmm. in the United States are misdiagnosed 11 okay. times there's an entire there's a whole thing on the autoimmune epidemic in the United States and everything, but that's the current statistic. Is that ten out of eleven women are misdiagnosed, and it takes eleven different doctor visits to finally get to the truth, which is I it, that's that's insanity. But yeah, that's the so new definition of insanity. I think freshman so you reached year, a breaking point. My freshman year when I was what like fourteen. That's young. I've got people in their fourteen 15s and sixties who was going completely there. over the medication because I had been on medication that wasn't working for so long. And then when I got on medication that I thought would work but never did, um, you know, even just in a year of taking stuff, and I wasn't taking that much at the time, but I was taking really, um, I was taking things that made me feel terrible. Like nothing that I took made me feel better. And then when I switched doctors eventually, I went to, so I had three doctors that I went to. The doctor that diagnosed me, um, and then another doctor in New York, and then after that, I went to, um, you know, my and third and final doctor. And that doctor I was with for three years. And let me just tell you that that was the most painful part of my life, was going into her, um, office and just being told that it's my fault. Because I'm not taking th this stuff, it's my fault, that, that I'm not getting you. better and that it's my responsibility to take it. And if I don't, I'm responsible for keeping myself in the dark place that I'm in. And let me just tell you, if people are telling you, if some doctor is telling you that today, leave that place. It's not for you because it is not your fault. Well, and that's, and that's an important thing. So, and that gets into another strategy too, mm -hmm. of being able to have the power within yourself to go, look, I'm making this decision because um, and we talk about your, whatever, whatever spurs you on to make your choice, whatever that inspiration comes, mm -hmm. you have to get to the point where if you want to get out of anxiety and depression, you've got to change what you have, you're doing. Absolutely. And it, it's interesting. So you, you as a very young person, mm -hmm. I mean, you're still a baby in the yes. terms of the <laughs> lifeline of life here, you know, and your timeline of life. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's very important to be able to have that power to make a decision. And I've got some people where their parents are pushing them to make decisions or their friends are pushing them to make changes. So it's okay to make changes. I think that's the biggest thing too, is that when you are, when you do have anxiety and depression, you have to realize that if you don't make changes, nothing will change. And that's mm -hmm. a very serious, serious consequence if you don't make changes. Yeah. We, we've discussed too, so you changed your circle too. Yes, you changed completely. your providers, you All, changed your friends. Mm -hmm. And making a change is a very important thing to get out of that anxiety and, and depression. can sometimes be scary because you're like, oh, well, these are my friends. This is what I go, this is the doctor I go to every week. This is everything that I do. Um, and sometimes people have fear of changing, but change is the best thing that can happen to you when you are stuck in anxiety and depression. And that's true. And and the funny thing is, and I'm gonna I'm gonna see I'm gonna explain now why change is accepted in other other areas of life. We need change. So let's say you're a chronic smoker, and there's a lot of people out there who have turned yeah. to smoking during this time. But so you're a chronic smoker. The number one strategy, if you look at every smoking cessation program out there on the planet, mm -hmm. even drinking. Let's talk because Alcoholics Anonymous yes. people with a lot of addicts and things like that. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things they tell you to change that addictive behavior is to change who you hang out with, change mm -hmm. your social structure, change your friends, change where you hang out. Mm -hmm. And that's funny because whether you're smoking or drinking, the first thing they tell you is to change who yeah. you hang out with because if you're going to quit smoking but all of your friends still smoke, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to quit. And it's yeah. funny because anxiety and depression is the same thing, although it's the silent, invisible disease that right. no one can see. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and it's, you know, whereas, you know, an alcoholic, you've got to buy your alcohol, but in anxiety and depression, you don't have to buy anything. You, yeah. It's just there. It follows you. But again, changing who you hang out with, mm -hmm. changing your social circle, you have to change. And that brings us up to some of the science. We, 
Remember, we talked last week about all the doctors that we talked to to prep for today's mm -hmm. show and the psychiatrist, the psychologist, some of the motivational speakers out there who go around speaking about doing nothing other than mm -hmm. getting rid of anxiety and depression. You're like, And we have some speakers I've talked to where they, they talk about religion and how important that is mm -hmm. in your life. And then I have others who don't even bring religion into it and say, mm -hmm. oh, there's a lot of people out there right now who don't want to go down that path. But here we go. The number one thing, there's the top five that they talked about, and we're going to ask you how you did this. Number one, the number one way to get out of anxiety and depression, they said, is get out of your head. Mm. Get out mm -hmm. of your head. Yes, so true. So what is the number one tip I'm going to ask you to give? How did you, what did you do to get out of your head? Because you were laying in bed for years. Mm -hmm. Like, what was one of the things that either your parents forced you to do? Or like, what, what was that one change? How'd you get out of your head? I completely got out of my head by surrounding myself by new people. Like you said just a moment ago, that you have to change the people you're around. I was so in my own thoughts and surrounded by all of these terrible thoughts every day. You know, when you are depressed, you have this, like, <laughs> you have this, like, always cycling pattern of, like, questions. Like, this will never get better. Why isn't this better? Why, why? why you always ask why me why why is this my life you're not content with your life a That's lot of people are a lot head. of people wake up every day and they go ugh. Change. i wake up every day and i'm excited i'm happy i'm ready to jump out of bed because like i question, didn't what am i gonna do today and and and, <laughs> and and the number one thing that i would say completely changed me it was changing my circle getting around people in church and um you know people that actually had joy had life were living and because when i could get out of the house a lot of the times i would just be able to make it to school and school is a place that's filled with a bunch of people that you know are going through drug drugs at a young age are drinking are you know messed up listening to things saying bad things so and Here's my thing. Now I've got parents who are message me and texting me and, mm -hmm. and talk in our groups and they're like, well, great, because, you know, now with the, you know, quarantine and the upcoming announcement probably today, um, you know, you can't get out of your house. You can't send your kids to school. Yeah. You're, there is no social. So at home, now that we mm -hmm. are stuck at home and have been stuck at home for a very long time, yeah. how do you get out of your head? Like, what's something you do yeah. at home now, mm -hmm. okay, that gets you out of your own head? Because, you know, we're not supposed to leave our homes or do things and minimize social interaction thing. What's one of the things that you, I can tell you what I do, but mm -hmm. what's one of the things that you do to still do that and surround yourself around new people? What's yeah. the trick you have? One of the things that I do is I draw, I paint, I read. I read my Bible all the time, but I also, you know, I love painting and I love drawing. So I also do that. I, um, can we call that finding a passion? Yes, of course, finding a passion, finding a purpose. But when I, when I opened the Bible and I started reading, let me just tell you, when you get off your phone and you actually read something, something, anything, read anything, but particularly the word of God, because it has power and it will change your life. It will genuinely change your life. And, you know, um, but read and, and, and educate yourself because that is so valuable to get out of your head and put truth into your life. And the word of God is truth and the word is God from John 1, 1, the word is God. Um, and so you have to know that today, that so, um, you have to read, you have to read, get out of your own head. And get off also, your phone. Yes, get off we'll your phone. We'll talk about the science of and that. And also, um, one of the things that I would say got me out of my own head um, with the negative thinking was having thankfulness and gratefulness. Being thankful, um, being thankful for for the things that I did have when I had nothing, really had nothing. I had to start looking at what I had, because that's what got me through those dark periods. Was I have my mom, I have my dad, I and, and you know what? If you don't have and a that very hairy dog, we have to talk and about a you. very hairy <laughs> dog, a golden retriever named Duke. But um, you know. It's, it's the thing that you have to look at what surrounds you. Wow, look at outside. Go outside today, even so though it's cold. I'm going to throw something at you because I remember a conversation I think I had with your mom, which I'm allowed to talk about. But yeah, writing and drawing. Mm -hmm. How do you get to the point? Because I have a parent who's asked a question, which we're going to get to now. But, you know, you started to accept your own talents. 
because right. I have a lot of people who who draw and paint and they don't like anything they do. <laughs> it's no matter what you do, it's not good enough. It's, it's even negative about that. So, because yeah. one of one of uh, Nancy sent us a message and she's got kids and now all the kids are home. Mm -hmm. And some of them have anxiety and she has one that cries all the time. Oh. And she's trying to get them out of their own head and to yeah. explore, I'm going to say, hobbies and crafts. Hobbies right. and crafts, whatever you want to do. So whether it's painting or Play-Doh or mm -hmm. making your own Play-Doh out of flour and sugar. You know, how do you get to the point where you say no matter what you create, it's okay? Because some of the artists yeah. out there, you know, if it's not perfect, they throw it away. And I can explain neurolog neuro neurologically why that happens. But how did you get to the point where you were okay with anything that you painted or anything that you drew? Because, mm -hmm. it, you know, you're, now you're pretty good at it. I embraced my own mistakes and I was grateful for even the ability to sit long enough to do something. Okay. Sitting long enough to do something physically was a victory was like a big moment was like the highlight of my and week. now just sitting right. because sitting caused me so much pain i had pain in my back so you, pain in my knees pain in my feet to make it to a place where i was sitting at a desk with paint and be grateful for everything you have don't take anything for granted let me just tell you that right now people take their life for granted the fact that you can go places the job that you are taking for granted and that you hate, be grateful that you can even get there today. Right. Be grateful that you can even sit at that office job that you hate, doing all the paperwork that you hate. Be grateful that you can move, that you have any activity in your life. Because I didn't for six years. And I will tell you, it was so, so terrible. Be grateful for the fact that you can move today. Be thankful and grateful for everything that you have in your life. And that is, believe it or not, that is actually one of the things on the list about how to get out of your own head yeah. and be, th be thankful. And we'll talk thankful. about that. So embrace your whatever passion and mission and talents that you have. It's very important. Um, and that also helps getting out of your own head to see things from a different But art, crafts, hobbies, doing things with your hands. It's very important. So what the best tip for kids, Nancy wants to know, okay, so I've got kids at home. How do I, you know, their anxiety, their stress, they can't go to school, they can't hang out with their friends. You know, we know that being on social media all the time and being in front of a parked electronic, we know is bad. I know on the one show we talked about um, tech injuries now that are plaguing America, bad back, carpal tunnel, three people Insane. with carpal tunnel right now because they're parked in front of a computer, they're sitting wrong, they're bent over, mm -hmm. you know. So how do you say goodbye to electronics even though we're zooming our way through life right now which is almost sad in a way mm -hmm. best tip for for art or crafts for kids what can you have a mom say okay okay mom here's what you can do at the kitchen table today with your kids um and totally try to get them out of that anxiety depression what's the, what's what's the best thing that you've done at your kitchen table a fun craft um i love to just Finger paint, finger paint for kids is really fun. It can be messy, but it's so fun. I used to do it all the time as a kid before I got sick. I did it all the time. As long as I don't we would finger just paint on finger paint on, paint on the walls. On right? the table, on the walls, <laughs> cover everything. Make sure they're wearing clothes they don't care about. But finger painting is super easy, super fun. They don't have to stay in lines. They don't have to, you know, do a coloring book. They can make whatever they want. They have complete freedom to do whatever they want. It's fun. Or tie dyeing. I tie dyed uh, shirts recently. Um, with kids that are my uh, family friends right. and for their birthday and it was super super fun right. and they there's some great ideas it. out High there too. Shirts is fun. They're, they're a lot of fun so the best tip for kids is get them engaged in something that does not involve a, a tablet a phone mm -hmm. a Chromebook or whatever piece of technology they don't need it no and um, we go I go old school I mean mm -hmm. honestly Cheerios are the best things to do art with because Cheerios and Elmer's glue work really well together mm -hmm. and you can make anything I mean and, we, and the fun thing now is Cheerios come in 87 different colors. So literally, <laughs> you can make your own Christmas trees out of Cheerios with Elmer's glue, glue them on a piece of paper. But anything where it involves hand-eye coordination, mm -hmm. and it does not involve an electronic piece of equipment that you're working on. But it's getting kids engaged in something with their hands. I know at home, you know, I have a daughter who paints. I have another daughter who loves working with my dog. She also colors. She has more markers, I think, than Hobby mm -hmm. Lobby. I have, my other son is into 3D printing. So we're up to, I think, two 3D printers right now that run pretty much 24-7. But working with things where you're trying to config, configure things and then glue things back together. He's been building a lightsaber right now for 
as remember the guest who's going to be in our show next week but mm -hmm. anything that you can do to work with your hands do something with yeah. your hands and be physically engaged and that's important because that is actually one of the number one um things to avoid anxiety and depression is move yeah. m-o-v-e move i had one i had a therapist tell me once hey look uh, uh snakes move and they don't have legs what's your excuse yeah. <laughs> that was honestly that was that was the comment that was thrown at me when i was i was in my deep dark uh, despair of, of of anxiety and depression but so that's a, that's important move so you had trouble trouble moving yes um, and you did some therapies to move, correct? Mm -hmm. So what was, there's a lot of people out there who have chronic pain, who have, and chronic pain can lead into anxiety, depression, but they don't understand that there is a way to become pain free mm -hmm. and not take medication. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about one of the therapies you did mm -hmm. to move a little bit more and get pain free? What did you do? Yeah, so um, one of the things that I did was I um, did the o ozone treatments. Um, Most people have no idea what that is. Yeah, I don't really know how to describe that either. Um, I think you could describe. Okay, it so than me. one of the things we talk again. I'm on the integrative holistic side, medical background, but totally yeah. gone um, holistic now at this point in my life. So one of the things that we did was we changed your autoimmune system. Mm -hmm. Okay, ozone. If you don't not do not know what ozone is, ozone is the healthier, you know healthier energy we get from the sun it's it's most it's strongest at the beach you know where the mm -hmm. ocean meets the sand but mm -hmm. in Nazareth one of the spas that I work at of called herbs your success they have an ozone sauna so you sit in what looks like a giant egg I kind of yeah. remember if you're you know from the 80s like you know Mork and Mindy you know the whole egg thing that became the planet mm -hmm. it looks like this box that you sit in your head sticks out of it and it's a 20 minute treatment. You will sweat. If you don't sweat, you will sweat and you'll burn about if what? If you don't six... sweat, you're weird. <laughs> but you will burn about 600 calories in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's also great for real life. But in 20 minutes, we are infusing the air that is around you and mm -hmm. the steam with pure ozone. And in 20 minutes, it will detox. Mm -hmm. It will invigorate your cells, increase cellular energy. In 30 minutes, and I do believe one time you made it 30 minutes. In 30 mm -hmm. minutes, it resets your autoimmune system. Yeah, and I will tell you right now, when I started doing that, I was feeling so much better afterwards that that's what truly made me throw away every single medication that I had. You did my, you pulled everything thing. out of your system. I was just completely like, I'm done. I'm over it. And I just dumped it all in the trash. I, I didn't even care. I didn't even ask anybody. I didn't ask my mom. I didn't even care. I was like, yeah, mom, I threw away everything today. She was like, okay. Well, you get to that point. Because you mind. get to that point. Right. And I'm telling you that that was my point when I found... You know, when I found that I was actually feeling better, I was like, wow, none of that other stuff even made me feel an ounce of that. And so I was just like, boom. And then, you know, in that in that journey, when I finally, because of that, I started, you know, being able to, to walk and to move and to stretch and to be comfortable with moving because moving was such a thing that I was um, not capable to do and not comfortable with. So... I started moving and that's when I, you know, got to church. I started being around good people, changing my life and um, making change in your life is the most important thing. And that's such an important tip today is to change who you're around. Go to church. Try it. I know a lot of you are saying she's crazy, but really try it. Try it. Today. And change your circle of friends. Mm -hmm. Change too. your circle. Important. And it's funny. Change is important. So. If for those of you who don't know about Ozone, want to learn more, reach out. Um, if you want to call in today and you're listening in, please feel free. Our call in number is 610-866-8074. We have a couple other questions I want to get to that people send in. But change is important if you want to um, get out of anxiety and depression. Yeah. And because that can lead to weight gain, it can lead to many other issues along the way. So let's talk about another change. So if you don't want to learn about Ozone, it's a phenomenal treatment, works very well. The other therapy, um, that we're going to talk about right after this break. Um, we're going to talk about the sauna and the laser treatment, mm -hmm. which we want to talk about that because there is hope for this. So we're going to take a short break. This is Dr. Susan. We are on WGPA sunny 1100 AM talking about anxiety, depression, and we're going to talk about more tips to get you out mm -hmm. of anxiety and depression coming up right after this break. It's 935. Cool. Get ready for winter. We want to do and supply. Ice won't stay everything sounds good. Just... Options available. Chemical and let's supply. make sure we get it. We got to get through this. So let's when we come back. Let's make sure we talk about this. 
I want to review that though. Okay. And then I think this. Yeah, we gotta get to this. Honestly, that's so important. Okay, so let's do. Let's and and especially the last last these questions, right? Yep. Are we um? Yes. Mm -hmm. We talked about sunshine. PH Integrative Health offers non-invasive and technologically advanced protocols that can decrease inflammation, reduce healing times up to 70%, and no side effects. Dr. Susan's PH. Let's do a little humor here. I'm going to start with this question mm -hmm. and talk about the food and just say, hey, you can't throw oranges at people, but let's take this question now. Mm -hmm. We're not exor ex ex you know, ignoring you, Isaiah. No, that's fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is the WGPA Sunny Hill weather forecast. Mostly cloudy for today with a snow shower to the early afternoon, high 38. Partly cloudy tonight, low 30. A bit of sunshine tomorrow and milder, high 47. Partly cloudy tomorrow night, low 27. Kicking off the weekend on Friday, it will be mild with partial sunshine, high 51. Patchy clouds Friday night, low 34. Saturday, cloudy and mild, high 53. For WGPA, sunny 1100, I'm Agri Weathers, Cheryl Bolden. It's 32 degrees with 80% humidity. Hi, this is Billy Burnett, and you're listening Coming to back. my favorite huh? American Coming back. Okay. station, WGPA in Bethlehem. And we are back. This is Dr. Susan with Dr. Susan's PH Integrative Health. We are talking about anxiety and depression. We have special guest, Julia in our studio today who lived through six years of just insanity um, yeah. and we've on the other side but we're going to start right away into some questions and things that you can do to change your life if you are suffering from anxiety and depression and we're going to talk about a couple things we've talked about one sunshine get outside get some sunshine get off technology we know technology depletes melatonin we know that messes up your brain mm -hmm. and people don't seem to get that even though they're on their phones even more than ever we talked about finding a purpose, a passion, get a hobby, paint, do something, mm -hmm. you know, have some cheerio art with your kid. And people might laugh at that and think it's funny, but watch how your kids' lives change overnight. Move, you gotta move, you have to move. But the other thing I wanna talk about now is, and we talked about this too, is change what you eat. Mm -hmm. There's the old saying, you are what you eat, you are, you are, you are what you eat. If mm -hmm. you, you know, we know that living through drive throughs is gonna kill you. The research statistics on that is insane but change what you eat. So we're gonna talk about that now because I know you changed your diet as well too. Yes, First you threw out all, a lot of the junk that yep. all the doctors were having you taking that do work yep. anyway, which is fine. If that works for you, then do it. You know, always, you know, as the standard disclaimer, please consult with your medical provider if you choose to do that. But I have more and more people who come to me and go, hey, I know what my doctor said, but what I did was I threw everything out. Yep. I'm like, wait, you threw out all your meds. Wait, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Yep. But they, they, they get to the point where they're just done. And I, I and cannot tell you how many people who come in mm -hmm. and go, hey, I want to talk to you because I stopped taking all my medication yesterday. I'm like, okay, who told you to do that? I just decided. Yep. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about what we eat. So change what you're eating. So one of the things I always tell people, well, what would you do if I told you there was a food out there that if you ate it every day would actually lessen your anxiety and depression? Would you eat it? Yeah. Okay. Now, so... Because this is going to lead into the question is, how do you deal with people who give you anxiety? Suzanne sent that question mm -hmm. in online, so we're going to get to her. So we're going to review some of the foods that we know that if you eat them every single day will lessen your body's ability to make you anxious and depressed because it is a biochemical reaction in the body. It is. Mm -hmm. Scientists have had that figured out. So peeling and eating two oranges a day. We talked about that. If you peel and eat two oranges a day, your depression anxiety will lessen. There's a lot of chemicals in oranges that are phenomenal for the human body. Um, we know that spinach also I love spinach. can prevent, uh, not the stuff in a can that Popeye ate, guys. Okay, the real fresh stuff you yeah, can go buy. On. You know, I like my friends down at uh, Azar's. <laughs> so Giovanni's probably listening this morning, but hey, thank you Azar's for everything you do. Pineapple. There's an anti-inflammatory property in pineapple. Delicious. It's People should be eating pineapple every day. And how about this one? This is one of the ones if, and this is a tip that has come from a couple of uh, people who specialize in counseling people with anxiety mm -hmm. and depression. If you are in the middle of a knockdown drag out anxiety attack, and I mean knockdown drag out, I've got parents with kids who've had some pretty tough bouts mm -hmm. right now, particularly with 
I know a lot of people are anxious about our 10 o'clock, uh, you know, government message today, which I will not be listening to, but <laughs> um, keep salt packets on hand. Did anyone ever tell you that when you were going through your, your nightmare? No. You know the little salt packets you get at restaurants that now people throw out? Mm -hmm. I know I'm a runner, so usually mile eight, they're handing out salt packets <laughs> in the middle of a marathon, half marathon, and there's a very physiological reason why they do that. Mm -hmm. Salt, when put on, on your tongue, instantly changes your body's response to chemicals. And putting salt on your tongue, not a whole lot of it, you gotta be very, that's why mm -hmm. the salt packets are a perfect proportion. On the tongue, if you're, like putting salt on your tongue, totally alters a brain neurotransmitter response in the brain that causes anxiety and depression. And it can instantly turn your brain around and actually get you out of that anxiety attack. And salt, now you better have some water on hand. I tell people you need water. But it's one of those uh, bizarre things that seems to have been working very well mm -hmm. for some people. And I know we, we have salt in the middle of like mile eight of the half marathon because you need, mm -hmm. you know, that Krebs cycle up and running so that can, your body can heal along the way. So foods are important, but in addition to changing your body with food and changing your brain neurotransmitter with food, a parent said, how do you deal with people who give you anxiety? Now, we can't throw oranges at them. That's not good. We right. can't, <laughs> can't walk around with a Nerf gun. Or Although when I was young, I used to walk around with a water gun. <laughs> oh, I thought that was funny. It was, it was just, you know, shh, you know, you know, but you could have a lot of fun with a water gun anyway. Um, what do you, how do you deal with people? We talked about changing your social mm -hmm. circle, changing who you have. How do you deal with people who give you anxiety? I might even make it tough and say, what if it's a family member? That's what I was going to say is that a lot of people right now have been with their family closer than ever before. And maybe their family is giving them stress. Um, and I've been through this. I've been through this with my mom because she my was mom caregiver. was my caregiver. And my mom was the person that I talked to and like literally the only person I talked to other than my dad as well. Um, but she was the constant one that was bringing me food, bringing me medication, which was a complete issue because I would get upset. You threw it, at you her. Threw it out and didn't even tell her at one point, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. that's what happened. And so, but before that, when she was bringing it to me, I would be like, I'm not taking that. I'd say that to her face. I'm not taking that. Like, I, when I say that I had a breaking point before I even threw it out, I did it because I refused to take it. I was like, it doesn't work. It's not doing anything for me. And so I refused to take it. And that causes anxiety because when you know that someone is trying to help you, quote, quote, you know, you, you. Only the people on YouTube who watch this on our YouTube channel yeah. are going to get the quote, quote. You guys thing. watch this on YouTube afterwards. <laughs> All right. Subscribe. So, so deal. Now you had to deal with your mom. Yeah. Okay, wish she you gave me anxiety. Okay, so mm -hmm. how did you change that feeling? What did you? What I happened? told her that she stressed me out, and so that you had a conversation. I had a conversation. Communication okay. is so big. If you, if it's your family, don't just hold it and suppress it and be like, you know, you're upsetting me, and I'm not going to tell you because so it's never going to get better. Say, say the, the words. words, and it's funny because. I talked to a neuropsychologist who practices, you know, healing people all the time. And she said to me, she goes, okay, Susan, here's what you're going to tell your listeners. She mm -hmm. goes, I want you to ask everybody out there the following question. What makes you worse? What makes you feel worse in your life? Do you feel worse when you've actually said something rotten to someone mm -hmm. or or whatever, you know, what when you've actually said it, or what gives you more mental stress when you think of all the things you should have said and didn't say, mm -hmm. which is worse. And they have found in all of the, I think they tested, you know, when they were in UCLA and doing the whole study out there, they think they randomly tested over five, they asked the same question over 5,000 people and it didn't, not, didn't matter the age, their gender, you know, their political, but it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Of all the 5,000 people, I think almost, almost all of them, it was like 90 some percent, 90 percent said they worry more, stress more, and are upset more, and have more mental stress over the things they didn't say. Yeah. Versus the things they did say. Because yeah. when you say something, if you say something really bad to rotten, you can actually apologize. But the the point of the matter was, the point of the study was, communication is key. If mm -hmm. you're not communicating what you're going you're through to somebody else, out. you're stressing yourself out. Open your mouth and say it. 
people know me. I talk with my hands. I have somebody who watched the one show we put up on YouTube, and mm. she texts me. She goes, do you always talk with your hands? I'm like, yeah, sweetheart, I'm Italian. I talk with my hands all the time. My hands work 24-7. Um, I remember being in court once testifying on a health matter for someone, and the judge says to me, she goes, you move nonstop. Can you sit still? I'm like, no, I can't sit still. I move 24-7. It's just the way I am. Yeah. So it's funny, but saying, so communicating is ideal. So how do you deal with, let's go back to Suzanne's question. How do you deal with people who give you anxiety? The first thing you would say would be? Talk to them and tell them that they give you anxiety. Because that's what tell you Tell them that the, these words that you say to me stress me out, your tone, your attitude, you have to confront people because they'll never change. And my mom had to do this with my grandmother because my grandmother was doing the same thing to my mom that my mom was doing to me. And I said, it ends with me. If there's something that's in your family that is continuing, it can end with you. You can turn around and go, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do this eventually to my children or my children that I do have, I'm not gonna do this to them because you're going to stop doing it to me. Right, so communication is key to help on that anxiety mm -hmm. depression cycle. How about this one? Um, one of the things you alluded to a little earlier yeah. is what about your reaction to people? Yes, your reaction to people can either be strongly, you know, obvious and upset or your reaction to people can be loving. Because let me just tell you, when you love yourself, like we talked on last week, I talked about loving yourself and um, learning to love yourself and how to do that. And so when you love yourself and you genuinely love yourself, it's not just an act, it's not a game that you play with yourself like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be confident in front of other people and then when I'm at home, I'm gonna tear myself apart in my head. When you actually love yourself, you're able to love other people. And I will tell you, a lot of people have hurt me in my life. Not only have I gone through this physical pain stuff, but I've gone through a lot of, you know, friendships and things that were very tough to get through um, with other people that, you know, should have broken my trust for every new person that comes in. But when you have God and you have faith, you overcome those things. You're able to say, those things are not controlling me anymore. I don't need to carry them. Because when you believe in Jesus Christ, all those old things that kept coming into your mind, all those old relationships, all that old baggage is gone. Because when Jesus died, he died so you could be set free of all of those things that are keeping you down in that ditch or keeping you to your old life. Your past is gone when when Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior because you are reborn to a new life. And your past is gone is right because one of the things too with dealing with anxiety with other people is yesterday's gone. You can't relive yeah. it. Mm -hmm. You can't change. You can't change yesterday. Mm -hmm. You're never going to change yesterday. And if you can figure that out, I don't know if Quantum Leap's coming back on the air. If people remember that show or Doctor Who's, you know, you know mm -hmm. the TARDIS is going to show up in your front lawn tomorrow. But, you know, you you have to start changing your reaction, not yeah. only to yourself, but also to other people. And that's important because how do you deal with people who give you anxiety? Okay, so I am on the humor, sarcasm side mm -hmm. of life. I know we talked about what we did last, uh, what my son mm -hmm. and I did last night for about two hours. Have joy with your family. Have joy, but ha change your reaction to other people. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and someone, in, in everything that you said too, is a very important thing, I'm gonna rephrase it, is lose yes. the self-examination. Yeah. We are so critical of ourselves. ourselves. I have one person, she used to be a model, and um, she was in, I think, Miss Universe or whatever, and she said the best thing she ever did was she got rid of half the mirrors in her house. She's like, stop looking in the mirror, because, you know, you know, unless you're going to like what you see when you look, you, stop looking in the mirror, because, you know, it's what we see when we look in the mirror is not what the rest of the universe sees. Yeah. We are complete, we have complete, our, our vision is skewed. So change your reaction to other people. The question is, is who's giving you anxiety? Is it a stranger? Well, then no offense. We don't need yeah, to worry about them. Care. Is it, if it's a relative, look, relatives are supposed to be the ones that love and accept you and right. take care of you and do everything mm -hmm. the most. And if that's the person that's going to hurt you the most, well, then you need to shut that door, lock it and walk away and throw the key away because you have to walk away from some of those people who are giving you anxiety. You can't willingly jump into a pool mm -hmm. or the ocean filled with sharks because mm -hmm. the outcome is not going to be good yeah. unless you're in a shark suit. So we, we always say, um, people go, oh, it's not that easy to walk away. You're going to say, yes, it is. Yeah. Because you walked away from it. It is so easy it is to walk very, away I, I'm going to tell you, 
yes, it is easy. You have to get yourself to that point where you walk away and go, okay, we're walking away. We're done. We're not dealing with anxiety anymore. Okay, I got to get to another question because believe it or not, we are going to run out of time again because mm -hmm. life is insane. But what's the best supplement? Now, you know, you threw out all your medication. Right. I deal with people all the time. Um, I have two number one selling supplements out of my office that both parents and kids take for anxiety that are no side effects, holistic. Even if you have the whole bottle, you're just going to be really, really happy. Did you take any supplements for anxiety? Did you take anything? Um, Do you remember? When I was on everything? No, after when you threw everything away and said, Mom, goodbye. When you came to see me, did mm -hmm. you? I don't think we even put, we never put you on anything, no. did we? Okay, so I'll have to answer this. Diane has two boys. Um, she said, and she goes, what's the best supplement for anxiety? She doesn't want to do the medication route because of the side effects. Because if you read the side effects, you'll never take any medication. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to talk about one of the best supplements I sell out of my office for anxiety is something called Cervo. It is a melt under your tongue tablet. It tastes like a sweet tart, mm -hmm. but it repairs the dopamine misfires in your brain that help cause anxiety and depression. It is safe for, it was developed for little kids, believe it or not, whose parents had them on Ritalin, Adderall, Stratera, and all those other crazy drugs. It was developed for kids by six guys in New York, six doctors. I work with two of them right now. They developed it. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal supplement um, mm -hmm. called Cervo. If anybody's interested in trying that, there are no side effects. Your 13-year-old mm -hmm. can take the whole bottle and literally he'll be really happy for a couple of days and it also helps that sleep cycle. Um, but Cervo is one of the other ones. The other question that came in is um, therapies that help um, anxiety and depression. You did ozone because it moved, removed all the toxins out of your system. We also did something on you called low-level light therapy. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Can you explain to the audience what low-level light therapy is? <laughs> do you feel it? Yeah. Do you, what, what do you feel when you have low-level light therapy done? Are you Basically sitting on the massage table, like, like what I okay. do. Okay, the, like, the you... laser. The laser. So... The you basically just hear feel it like warm up on your skin, and um, afterwards it's like everything is just more relaxed. Like I feel um, like the the tension like go away. Like when so physically, I'm, physically yeah, it changes tension. tension. Yeah, yeah. So one of the therapies that we've been researching for years um, for and is a company. I work with a company called Thor Laser. It's called low-level light therapy. The scientific name is photobiomodulation. We're using light to mm -hmm. change how your cells behave. Mm -hmm. The sun changes our cells every single day. Every day, the sun. Mm -hmm. So we're using light just in a very specific modality. So one of the therapies we do, and I, we've been doing anxiety and depression treatments um, since 2010. And right now, um, it, we use a laser. It's called LED. Mm -hmm. And we've been using that. And it reduces the inflammation in the brain because mm -hmm. we know the more inflammation you have in your brain in, in the interstitial gray matter mm -hmm. of your tissue we know that you have more anxiety mm -hmm. and depression so we use this therapy to lessen that inflammation rate in the brain mm -hmm. and your anxiety and depression symptoms i used to have really away. bad migraines like all the time i do think that it was mostly because i was never drinking water drink water That's um i was never drinking was. water and i um was always uh watching my phone so like i was just plugged into a screen all day like a potato and i was i was you know totally ruining my brain um and so i had migraines all the time but that's what i mean when i say like the tent you feel the tension relax like i don't get migraines anymore at all. that's good well I, and then the funny thing is if we use thor laser for migraine i have zero mm -hmm. i always tell people i have zero migraine patients because they come in for their treatments and I never see them again because they never get migraines again. Yeah. My last migraine was April 10th of 2010 because that's when I had my last treatment. Mm -hmm. And I have never had a migraine since. So you can be migraine free. But the low level light therapy is the most non-invasive, easy, easiest treatment on the planet for anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. Safe for kids, safe for adults. There's no contraindications. We call it healing with zero side effects. So if you're interested in learning more about Thor laser and healing with no side effects, please reach out. My name is Dr. Susan of Dr. Susan's PH Integrative Health, and we're talking about anxiety and depression and things you can do to solve your story. So we're going to talk about a couple of things. Um, we, of all the research that we've been through, we're going to talk real quick. We're going to give you a list. So if you have a pen or a paper or if you're going to watch down. this on YouTube, write this down. Here are things you can do at home.
to help get out of that anxiety and depression. Number one, you need a schedule and a routine. Mm -hmm. you, ha you need a to-do list every day. You need a reason to yes. get out of bed. I don't care what it is, whether it's going to paint your bedroom wall, whether it's going to make uh, Christmas trees out of Cheerios with your kids whether today. Whether it's just cleaning. Clean something. Declutter. You need a schedule and routine every day. You need a purpose. Find a, and mm -hmm. we said that helping others. Now yes. you found yours through religion and God and working through the church. Yes, my relationship. Find with what God. is your purpose? Everybody needs a purpose. I know with me, I found mine opening and running nonprofit foundations to help people with cancer. Mm -hmm. Whether it's kid with kids with cancer, I started with Think Pink Nights years ago. Now it's the Every Living Found Counts Foundation. You need a purpose. Mm -hmm. You need to get out of you and help somebody else. Yeah. The other thing is managing your time. Do you do, do you, uh, you I noticed you write very organized notes. Yes, I do. Incre so managing Usually your time. Just like this. I will tell you, I have a very good friends with uh, Brittany. Um, she is on, Brittany Nicole is on YouTube and she has her own blog. And she also, her biggest thing is she does a to-do list every Sunday night yeah. for the week. She's got two you kids. She homeschools. She works from home. She has a YouTube channel with thousands and thousands of us. She said managing her, if you want to get out of anxiety and depression, manage your time, have a schedule and stick to it. Or you'll lose it. your time. That's you'll right. You'll look back at your life and go, I did nothing if you don't manage it. And if you, you don't can't. schedule yourself, if you don't manage yourself, you'll lose your time. Wait. Um, you'll waste it. I'm going to do this one. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Listen to comedy. I don't care. We, last night, my son and I spent two hours. Yep. I'm not really on Snapchat. He made me again. Playing with the Snapchat filters. So I funny. was turned into a princess, a grandmother, an evil Santa. I mean, we laughed for two hours. It's like 12, 30. I'm like, I gotta go to bed. So laugh out loud. Find a comedy channel, but yeah. you have to laugh. You gotta get out of yourself. Find the humor in everyday life. People know me. I've been hiding baby Yodas all over. I I have a Yoda here. If you watch on YouTube, I have an Instagram channel called mm -hmm. Baby Yoda Seek and Find. And all we do is have these little tiny one-inch Yodas. We've been hiding them everywhere. It's been hysterical. Mm -hmm. And I go into stores and take pictures and promote the small business mm -hmm. and go, okay, who can find Baby Yoda in the picture and Missing Piece or Herbs Your Success or a, a store in Bangor? You know, you have to have anyway. Um, thank someone else. Yeah. Thank anybody. Be grateful. Be thankful like we talked about earlier. Love anyway. Love anyway. Despite what you're going through in your life. Love the idiot who cuts yeah. you off at the red light and ran through Everything. two inner light, you know, because stop signs don't mean anything anymore, right? <laughs> that, that, that some, and someone told me that white lines are optional right now. I, said, I, I don't know. I, I drive all the time. I just go, you got to be kidding me. You know, don't get on 22 if you're in the local area because people have no clue how to get on 22. Go, oh, you just weren't taught how to merge. I'm Love sorry. Anyway. I, okay, apologize. Someone did not teach you how to merge on a 22. <laughs> okay. Um, lose control. Stop being obsessive. Mm -hmm. You know, just worry about every little thing has to be perfect. No, it doesn't. No, and you can't control the weather. Someone told me why worry about things you can't control. Should you ever worry about the weather? Yeah. Unless you have a time machine, we can't control the weather. Um, and someone else said this one. Um, a couple of doctors uh, had this one on their list. Never fear loss. Mm -hmm. Everything's gonna go away eventually. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So those are the top things. So. There's a lot of things you can do. If you are suffering from anxiety and depression, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to get help. You need to call someone. If you do not have a resource, I have an entire list in my office of groups and organizations here in the Lehigh Valley that can help you. There are many mental health providers out there who can help you. There are phone numbers you can call. If you don't have that, we can help you with that. But please, please get help if you have anxiety and depression. If you have any questions, fresh you know how to reach me. My name is Dr. Susan, 